So we want our debris to also be physics enabled, just like our other boxes. We want it to behave um, just like they do. In fact, let me take one of these. I'm going to duplicate it one more time. I'm going to move it over here and let me turn my view around and then I'm going to rotate it. And move it up kind of like that. So now we should get a nice little kind of a falling effect. And then it'll become really obvious when I click this. This thing has been busted up into little bits and pieces. It should just shatter and collapse here, but it's not. And that's because the debris pieces are not physics enabled. So what we could do is go into our, this is our debris version. We could go into here, open it up, open it up, find every single one of these cells, try to add some sort of like box collider around it. But obviously we're not going to do that. That would be incredibly tedious. And the box colliders don't fit properly around this anyway. What we have to do is go back to our model and our destroyed version of the model. We're going to tell Unity, listen, generate some mesh colliders that so we're going to generate some colliders that fit perfectly around the mesh of our individual little busted up components. We're going to turn that on and we're going to apply. Now, if I pull in my broken version of this again, and click on a cell, you can see there's a mesh collider around these things. So now this is physics enabled. Well, it has colliders anyway. It doesn't yet have rigid bodies. I'm going to do that. Actually, it should be in the prefab. So we're going to expand our prefab and expand this. So these all have Oh, I'm lying. Because this prefab version of the model is not the same as the one that's been imported. So I have to replace this with the new version that now will have colliders, which I can do very simply by just dragging that in there. And I'll double check that this is the version that has mesh colliders. Perfect. That's what, exactly what I'm looking for. So now I can, I can uh, apply the change to our debris. But that's only half the equation. Now physics objects will hit this, but these are not yet being pulled down by gravity. So what I want to do is select all these cells one more time, add component, physics, rigid body. Done. Now I can apply the changes to the prefab. And if I bring this in front of my person, bring it to the surface and hit play, I should see this thing crumble in front of me. But it, what, what happened? It didn't crumble. Instead, it just fell, fell through the world. It's almost like it's not colliding with anything. But if I take this and move it on top of my boxes and play and look up, you can see, well, it's definitely colliding against my boxes. Well, why is it colliding against that, but not my plane? The reason is, if I click on the plane, you can see that the collider that's on the plane is a mesh collider. It's not a box collider. And mesh colliders have a very, very specific behavior in that mesh colliders can't collide with other mesh colliders because it's, it would be incredibly computationally expensive to try to calculate that. Unless, and the reason that mesh colliders can collide against uh, box colliders and sphere colliders and capsule colliders is because those are guaranteed to be convex. Convex means that our collider for this doesn't have any holes in it, doesn't have any dents in it. It is mostly sort of squarish, roundish, something or other. Um, and then mesh colliders can collide against one another because the, the physics and, and the way to calculate it is much simpler. Um, as long as so we don't have to, even though the plane, technically the plane is totally convex. We could totally specify a convex collider on the plane and that would work. But we don't actually have to have everything be convex. A convex mesh can collide against a non-convex one just fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to take all our cells and we're going to tell them that they're all convex. And we're going to apply that to our prefab. And now if I hit play, boom, boom, boom. It properly collides against the ground. Eh, it might clip through a little bit uh, because it is a plane. Now, in practice, we might not want this to be a plane at all. We might want to use a cube uh, or at least a box collider just to give it thickness and make it harder for things to pass through one another. We could also increase the, um, the, the number of steps that the physics simulator does every second. And then you're going to get 
much, much more fidelity. Um, so that's pretty good. But actually now we get to get see the good stuff. Not only do we have that one box already in place, but now I can destroy this one and have it shatter exactly the way we want. And doesn't that look good? Doesn't that look really good? Boom. And then that shatters as well. Oh, here it comes tumbling down. Boom. Now, because when we rent, when we uh, model this in Blender, and let me bring it back into, um, which one is it? This one here. When we model this in Blender, and we solidified things, there's technically a little bit of overlap between our objects, right? If I click on this object here, you can see, whoops, that it is, it is overlapping with this object. These two are, objects are intersecting one another. And depending on what you're going for, that could be a glitch. But for my application, it was perfect because it means that when we destroy a box here, it's going to sort of bulge out a little bit and, and shatter in a much more dynamic way because the, everything that's overlapped will sort of like kind of explode outwards. They'll try to un-overlap each other. And actually, it'll be really good on this one here. And then it shatters. Otherwise, it would be, if there was no overlap, it would be a perfect shatter. And the pieces might just like kind of stick together like a jigsaw and stay there until something went up and nudged them there. So depending on what kind of thing you're trying to do, you'll get, uh, you'll get, I don't know, you'll want to do it slightly differently. Anyway, um, that is, uh, that is it for the actual shattering. I did want to show you one extra piece of bonus content right now.